Hi everyone, today we're going to look at the Brix PLC High Speed I.O. And these are the uh, inputs and outputs that are, can be input and output at a faster rate than what your scan time can actually um, handle. So this is done um, externally usually and asynchronous with the scan time itself. So what you'll see is up on my screen here, I have the wiring diagram and we'll look at our look at a quick example of how we can take an output. I'm going to take the output here from my output side and feed it back into my input side. So what we're going to do is wire up the output. We'll use the uh, a syncing style. So we have our 24-volt uh, power supply that's built into the CPU itself. And what we'll do is take the negative side and put it to our common. Our output side of the uh, output will then go into our, out, or our first input, which is X0, and then the common of this will then uh, go from um, our common back into our power supply at 24 volts. So what you'll see is we actually have our output is a sinking and our input is also a sinking because we have the common sitting at plus 24. So that is our wiring. The next thing we have to do is actually look at our configuration. If we look at the configuration, we go to our onboard I.O. and we can hover over our high speed I.O. and you can see I have things set up already, but we'll go through each step. And we're, because we're bringing in the signal very fast, we need to look at the input filters first of all. And that calls up our input filters. And it defaults to 25 hertz, so 25 times a second we can actually bring in that input into the PLC. In our case here, that's going to be way too slow, so we're going to change the our first uh, input, input 0, to 20, uh, 250,000 uh, hertz, or 250 kilohertz. And you can see here that we can select uh, time in nanoseconds or raw clocks, or frequency which I prefer and we'll just hit OK. So once we have our filtering done then we look over to our high speed. Let's move that over a little bit. There's our high speed I.O. and up on this um, Bricks high speed I.O. our first under timer counter functions um, we'll have function number one. We'll set that for um, a timer function. So we have that set for a timer. It automatically will give it a device name. In our case here, it's HSCTR TMR1 or high speed counter timer 1. And what we're going to do is call it on the edge timer so it matches the edge to edge. We will enable the free uh, run. So that means when we enable it the first time, it will continuously uh, run and give us the output. And we're going to use input 0 for that timer. You'll see that we also have enabled our uh, scaling. And our scaling, we're just going to use uh, units of 1. And we're going to look at the time base of units per second. So that means it will um, should give us a frequency in our uh, scaled value output of this uh, device. Said so, okay. So that is our high speed counter timer one device. Then we look at our function number two and we're just going to have an up counter. So we go to the counter, we call this device high speed counter timer two. We have an up counter. Our input is again the same input as we chose for the timer. And what you'll see now is we could also enable our resets. We could do email capture, but we're going to keep this application very simple and straightforward. So we're just going to use a high speed timer to set our device. Now, once we do the devices, the timers and counters, it actually automatically sets up a block or a heap um, area within the controller so that we can look at all these parameters that we're monitoring. Now, the last thing we'll do is set up our axis. And our axis number one. So we'll take that. And what you'll see is we will use a pulse output and we'll use step and direction. And our step will be output number zero, which is what we want here on our controller. 
and our direction will come from output number four. Now I use that to separate it so if I wanted to use other high speed outputs I could. So that's the only thing to set for the axis. So once we set OK and again we can monitor by just hovering over our high speed I.O. and we can see that the information that we've set are now in the controller. Hit OK. So that was all under our system configuration there. Um, you could also go PLC system configuration and get to the same menu. So what you'll see now is up on my screen I have a couple of uh, instructions and basically they are the instructions for our access control. Our configuration and then our, um, our velocity mode of our axis. So you see here that I have my um, C100, it's actually triggering this instruction, which is at axis zero, or axis one that we just set. So if we were to look at what's in there, you can see here's my axis uh, number one in my structure. We can figure our axis here if we wanted to. Um, we said it's a linear, our initial position is zero, our maximum velocity or minimum velocity is going to be 100. Our maximum velocity is going to be 250k or 250,000 pulses per second that we're going to send out of this port. And our acceleration and deceleration rate are going to be set at 1000. So that's all there is to set up our axis configuration. Now the next one we have under um, C101 is we have our um, velocity and under our velocity you can see that we have again our axis structure we can we're going to set none for excel decel mode because we're just going to do it instantaneously because it's our sample going directly into our input and then we have bits associated with the, uh, this uh, device uh, c2 and c3 for our our um, success or error depending on what we put in. So that is what we have for our program. So now the only thing left to do is we called up our, our monitoring here and you can see that I am online and I'm running. So you'll see that I'm suspended right now. What I'm going to do is just flip this uh, controller stop this and now we'll flip it back into terminal mode run mode and what you'll see is it says unconfigured now it's unconfigured because we haven't initialized our axis yet so let's do that and in order to uh, initialize it we just hit uh, C100 so we'll turn that on write that let's begin so now that's turned on you can see now that our we've enabled this output to start energizing pulses to us with a minimum velocity of 100 pulses per second, a maximum of 250,000 pulses a second, Excel and decel is zero. And you can see our success bit, C0 is on because it has done our configuration for us and which we have on our second line here. So we're all ready for our axis set velocity mode. So if we scroll down here, now on this, what it's doing is right now is it says it's idle, execution mode is idle, but when we execute it, it will then start outputting our pulses to us. So I'll turn that on. And sure enough, what you'll see is on my controller, we now have our pulses being pulsed out out of our output, going to our input here, in which we can then monitor and see our values. So let's go back up here and we'll look at our data monitor and what it's actually showing us. So if we look at our high speed, our device, our high speed counter timer one, you'll see our enable is one. You'll see our, our accumulation mode. This is the mode or the time from the leading edge to leading edge of our input signal. It's showing us or displaying us that value. We also have our scaled value. So our scaled value is that engineering value that we set to run in order to show us our frequency basically of our input which is telling us right now it's 100 which is exactly what we we did set for 
So our high-speed high timer counter one enabled, that must be on. You can see that's on right now for us. Then we have our high-speed uh, counter timer two, which is actually our accumulation. Our accumulation is just a, a count that, that goes on, and it tells us how many pulses we set on that port. If we want, we can then reset that um, pulse count and zero it out by using that bit. Then we, last we have our target velocity for our axis, which we can then change at will. So right now it's 100. Let's change that to 1000. And when we do, we'll just write that in the controller. And right now it's 1000. You'll see my scaled value now is 1000. The PLC itself, you can't really tell um, the speed at which it's it's going, it's just because it's so quick, it's within that scan. So we can go right up to uh, 250,000 if we want. So the only difference that you're really going to see is again my time between pulses is now rapidly decreased. As you can see, <laughs> this is the maximum we can output. You can see my uh, axis and when we monitor it on our, our ladder, you can actually see the velocity and the current position incrementing quite a bit. Our current velocity is set for 250 kilohertz. You can see that now my counter here, of my actual position, our counter is now rapidly increasing. So you can see that it's very straightforward in order to um, create high speed I.O. within the BRICS. Uh, series PLCs and there's so much more that you can do with this we can bring in quadrature encoders and there's a whole series of instructions just dedicated around motion control that you can do with this controller I won't get into all the details but if you review chapter 12 of the operation manual you will see all the instructions and I've put further links into documentation about all the other high-speed IO that you can get So all this uh, information is available on our website and all the links to be downloaded can be found on accautomation.ca. Now if you like this video and like to see more, there are three ways in which you can help us out. You can give us a thumbs up so other people can find this information just as you have. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel at the end of the video. You can also go to accautomation.ca and subscribe to our website. When you do, notification will be given to you every time we publish new content to the site. You'll also get two free ebooks on numbering systems and robust data logging. And the third thing to do to help us out is to tell a friend or colleague about the site. Alright, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.